Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome to episode number 52 of the Good Point Bro podcast. My name's Caden. This is my little bro, Cam. Don't sleep. Don't sleep, baby. Uh, Yeah, so cleaned up the setup a little bit. Obviously, to you guys, it looks pretty much the same, but whatever. Yeah, hopefully it gives us the, the clear mind. Maybe it'll remind me to lower my voice a little bit so that, like, as far as, like, high pitch to low pitch, so that I don't just voice crack every 15 seconds of the episode. You just voice cracked. As, I don't think as I did. You said that. I heard it. You're blind to it because you do it so much, bro. It wasn't a real one. It might have been like a you little. Need like a little rubber band. You know, how people used to have rubber bands if they like That's, did. Or I don't have something. an addiction to voice cracking. Well, That's I not mean, how it works. I don't know. Maybe you can train your mind. Every time you voice crack, you just. You just did. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. On, vo- on the word voice, you voice cracked. Well, maybe I need to get one too then. <laughs> it's the Hern Bro way. Yeah, I don't know. I just did it. I don't understand. <laughs> I honestly don't understand. Like, I wonder if there's something you can do for that. <laughs> this like, is unreal. All right, I'm really going to try to uh, not voice crack. <clears throat> I don't know. I wonder if there's something you can do for that. If you can go to the doctor or whatever. Eat more pineapples. For real? No. Oh. All right, let's get right into it. We're going to get right into it today. <laughs> Uh, the NFL draft combine has officially ended. One, it was a pretty good draft combine overall, I feel like. Uh, two, as an Alabama fan, I felt like Alabama players really stepped up. Jameer Gibbs, I think he had the fastest running back time. Bryce Young obviously didn't compete, but, you know, Will Anderson did well as well. So, yeah, Will Anderson did really good. Yeah. So, for me, Bryce Young is the obvious number one overall pick. I think he's the most talented QB in the draft class. Um... Now, who gets them? I don't. I don't really know. I don't know if it'll be the Bears or if they'll trade. It look, uh, previous reports said they were leaning towards trading the pick, but obviously nothing has come out of that so far. It might be a draft night thing. Did you see he weighed two hundred four? That's not. I mean, I know he's short. He was five ten one eight without shoes on. Yeah. Remember, so with cleats on, he'll be, you know, five eleven and a half. And I mean, two hundred four is not tiny, dude. That's not Drew Brees. Like, Drew Brees had to have been 180. Drew Brees? Yeah. yeah. He was smaller than Bryce. But Russ was thicker than Bryce, though. Yeah. Yeah, Russ was thicker. But then look where look where he is right now. What? He's had a very successful he does, career. He doesn't have the passing ability that Bryce did, like, not even close. Who? Like, Russ relied on his body way more than Bryce does. Like, a thousand percent. He does yeah. not have the touch or yeah. passing ability or decision-making that – that Bryce Young has. So I think that Bryce is yeah. going to be better than him as well. So this is a picture. Uh, obviously, you guys can't see it. I don't even know if it'll focus. That didn't even look that bad. But that's Bryce Young next to CJ Stroud. I'm not sure. That that might be Anthony Richardson. That's Anthony Richardson, yeah. He's kind of bent down. Yeah, he's so kind of like, chilling. Because he's 6'4 and a fourth and 245 pounds yeah. and run, ran a 4'4". Four, four, four. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And then here's another picture of yeah. Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. So, I mean, yeah, height's going to play somewhat of, an, of a factor, but, you know, with how the offense has spread out a little bit, I think that'll help too. And then is he even that much smaller than, than Stroud? CJ Stroud? Not I mean, for real. Yeah, I mean. He's I not that much smaller than Stroud. If you want to talk about, like, crazy differences, it's Anthony Richardson. Yeah, that's the only. But he doesn't have Bryce's like. No, not even quarterback. Like, present. He's not. He doesn't. He's not a a quarterback, dude. Anthony Richardson though, he is a freak athlete. A freak athlete. No, he's a freak. But I'm saying like he is not like. There's people that can throw hard in baseball, and then there's pitchers like actual pitchers. Anthony Richardson is not an actual quarterback. Go watch him at Florida. He was not accurate at all. He di- he didn't have the pocket awareness that Bryce Young did. And just because he's a freak athlete doesn't mean he can make up for all those things. Like, just because we have Josh Allen in the NFL now, who has a problem with interceptions, especially in the red zone and decision-making, because he re- relies too much on his athleticism, we take one guy and we're like, okay, this is the guy we're looking for for the next 10 years. That's not how we should do things. Like, people are like, well, look at, yeah, look at Josh Allen. This is the way the NFL is heading towards these big guys. And then we're just going to take everybody who comes along like that. That's not I, I see what you're saying to some extent, but I think if he was – with his intangibles, if he was 6'2 or 6'1, it would still be 
a freakish thing. Like he has the intangibles of a QB. Now, does he have the accuracy, finesse, the ability to read the defense? No, but neither did Patrick Mahomes, and he fell to eighth. And I'm not saying he's going to be anywhere near Patrick Mahomes. I'm just saying he, to me, with he's a raw talent, and I don't, I could see a team definitely like the Chiefs were taking Anthony Richardson and him turning into something special. Yeah, I, I disagree. I would think the better comparison for him is Lamar because, like, the accuracy issues, he doesn't have the – he cannot throw the ball like Patrick Mahomes can. I mean, Patrick Mahomes has more touch than anybody who's ever touched a football. A better comparison for him is Lamar, and you weren't defending Lamar the other day. You were saying how bad he's been and he can't stay healthy, and a guy like Anthony Richardson is probably going to have health problems when he relies on athleticism that much. I don't feel like he does, though. I think a lot of his problem – I was watching some tape on him at Florida. A lot of his problem was just the offense and his receivers. I mean, Bryce didn't have good receivers either. And I'm not comparing him order. to Bryce, really. Well, I, I'm just comparing like people are saying maybe he should be the number one pick now just because of how – Yeah, his odds went from 10,000 to 500. I know. I'm Just because of his intangibles and, measure, and measurables, I think that – I think that that is a factor. I'm not saying that that doesn't matter at all. Yeah. But I think when you get a guy like Bryce Young, where everybody knows that he's the best, like 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 uh, the Bears did it when they drafted Mitch Trubisky. Like, dude played 12 games, was a big guy, like had a good combine, you know, and everybody was so high on him. But they didn't take the guy who actually had experience, like Deshaun Watson or Patrick Mahomes, who played – three years in college. They took a guy that had good measurables and played t 12 games. But Anthony Richardson played no, as well two years. Yeah, I, I think Anthony Richardson is kind of in a class of his own. But he didn't play good at Florida. So I'm saying sometimes you just have, have to – Florida is Sometimes you just – No, they, get, they have high – They have top 10 recruiting classes every single year. Every single year. That has nothing to do with them being good or bad. So does a &M, but they just, just won saying, four games. I'm just saying he's in the SEC and he's got athletes around him. It's not so like does a &M, and they, college. So does A&M, and they won four games. Yeah, well, they had a they didn't have a good quarterback. I'm just okay, saying that's the one position they couldn't figure out. What I'm saying is sometimes you just got to go with what your eyes tell you. And your eyes tell you that Bryce Young is the best quarterback, not I think you're misplacing what I'm saying because I'm not – I'm not really talking to you, dude. I'm just talking to well, everybody okay. out there. Well, you're answering yeah. what I'm saying. Like I'm talking to like just the people out there that think that I like Anthony to me, Richardson's the next Josh Allen. To me, if my options as the Colts are trade up and get CJ or stay where I'm at and get Anthony Richardson, I'm fine with staying where I'm at. Not because I think that Anthony Richardson is ready right now, but I, I think that he's a very high risk, high reward. Bryce or Richardson? Richardson. Okay. And I that's where we differ. I think like if I'm a team, I gotta get Bryce Young. Like I have to. I think he's. I just one. said C.J. Stroud. Oh, I thought you said Anthony Richardson. I thought you said the Colts. I said would be if fine I'm a Colts saying, and I have to trade up and get C.J. Stroud or Sarah Matt and get Anthony Richardson, I'm gonna go ahead and keep Anthony. Uh, or well, okay, but if you were like, Anthony. if the Colts had an option to go number one, would you do that to get Bryce Young, or would you stay where you're at and get Stroud or Anthony Richardson? I like, guess it really. Where do you think the gap is with Bryce Young and the rest of the quarterbacks in this draft? I think. If I'm a team that is a QB away is when I'm most looking for a guy like Bryce Young. I think that if I'm a guy, if I'm a team that obviously as a team already needs multiple years to develop, why not get a guy like Anthony Richardson that does too? And that can kind of develop with the team over a couple of years. I mean, you saw that with Trevor Lawrence, a team that, you know, Trevor Lawrence needed to, like to find some stuff to learn how to like the NFL works and stuff like that. Um, he's very, was very NFL ready, obviously more than Anthony Richardson. But why not have your QB develop along with your team and then, you know, three, four years down the line, you're beating the Chargers and you're playing the, the Chiefs in the divisional round. Um, so maybe a team more like the Ravens with Anthony, Anthony Richardson and go ahead and get rid of Lamar. I could see something like that uh, being like fairly successful. Um, or a team like the Saints that already has a good defense. You know, maybe pick up a, a couple of things, and then you have Anthony Richardson. But with them, I think they're. I think they actually are finalizing a deal with Derek Carr. So that maybe not them, but the Jets. Just and no, the Saints. Oh, okay, because I saw that the that Derek Carr visited the Jets again uh, last yeah. week. Yeah, I think Adam Schefter reported today that Saints are far and away leading in the the race. I guess to get Derek Carr, and that it looks like he could sign by the end of the day. The thing is, is I agree with you 100. percent I think if Bryce Young goes to like. Uh, quarterback away and they're a contender they are going to like be a Super Bowl threat like I think if you put Bryce Young last year on like the Titans or a team like that that's uh, still maybe not the tight what 
what's it? What's like good good teams that were a quarterback away? Maybe the, 49ers. the Raiders would be a ten win. Forty Niners. The Forty Nine. Yeah. If you put Bryce Young on the Forty ers they would have won the Super Bowl last year. That's how NFL ready Bryce Young is. There has never been a quarterback in the history of football that is more ready for the NFL than him uh, since he's been in college. Like you were talking about, he could read defenses that he's never even seen before when they put him on the testing. Like, like no, there is nobody that has the football IQ that this dude has. There's nobody that has the pocket presence that Bryce Young has. There's nobody that has the finesse that Bryce Young has at that age. We've never seen anything like it before. This is not I, – I can't even compare him to Drew Brees. I'm not going to compare him to Russell Wilson because he's going to be better than those guys. He will be better, and especially if he gets the right situation because I think at the end of the day, there will be a team that is a quarterback away and going to be a contender that is going to get their hands on Bryce Young, and he will already be in a good situation. That could be. I mean, that's another thing that – another kind of reason that if I'm the, the Baltimore Ravens, I'm fine with going ahead and either taking the franchise tag where he can find an extension elsewhere and you get two first-rounders, or I'm just not signing him at all. And the reason for that is, to me, even with Lamar Jackson, a healthy Lamar Jackson, the AFC is stacked, and they're not making it to a Super Bowl, and they're not winning a nope. Super Bowl because they're, they're more than a QB away from winning a Super Bowl. The only team that I think can win without being a super stacked team already – is the Chiefs because Patrick Mahomes yeah. is just that good? <laughs> Anybody else? You need you you need a you need a top five QB and you need great everything because even if if the 49ers are they're great everywhere yeah. they're great everywhere and, and they, they didn't even have enough yeah they are QB away that that means QB away like uh, the Colts a few years ago not a QB away this they the Titans a few years ago with they Henry. were QB away yeah, right that's what I'm saying yeah. like a few years ago when yeah. they made the AFC championship. Definitely a quarterback away. Those are the teams that I think if they get Bryce Young, the Raiders know. But I think if the Raiders got Bryce Young, they are a 11-12-1 team. The Raiders' problem is their line and, and I uh, think, their defense. Yeah, their defense sucks. But I think that if you, they got Bryce Young, you know, and they got the line better, which Bryce Young, he doesn't need a great line. Everybody needs a he line. He does in the NFL. I bet you. Yeah, I I bet I'm just saying like a guy like him. Because he's a young guy. Like, anytime you got a young guy in the NFL. Like, people compare him to Patrick Mahomes, right? Patrick Mahomes still took the Chiefs to the Super Bowl when he didn't have a good line either. Joe Burrow, those guys, now, I'm not saying that they're going to win a Super Bowl because you need a line to win a Super Bowl, but they can still make a run. Like, yeah. Joe Burrow went to the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes went to the Super Bowl against the Bucks, got smacked. But my thing about but those guys can still, like, get you yeah, dubbed. I agree, but watching Bryce Young this year with a slightly worse team and a slightly worse line – it seemed like he bought time a lot more, and I don't think he'll have quite that much time in the NFL. Yeah, no, definitely. So, not. so definitely. that's why I think, like Joe Burrow, averages the ball almost to the receiver's hands in two and a half seconds. Yeah, but it doesn't also matter what defensive though. or offensive line you have, if he's getting the ball out in two and a half seconds, it's going to be tough for the defense. What team should get Bryce Young? What team should want him the most? I think that. As far as teams looking for a QB that don't like, so I think the 49ers, they're not trading up for nothing. They they think that Trey Lance and that Brock Purdy could be their guy. So they're 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 out. Um then it looks like teams like the Jets and the Saints, they're looking for vets. So you're out on those guys. Man. The Panthers aren't ready to win nothing. Uh the Colts, in my opinion, really aren't ready to win anything. Um what about the Raiders? The Raiders could be. I don't know where they're at in the draft. Um, the Bears are an entire franchise away from winning anything. Um, the Texans so are too. I honestly, I like the Colts. Hate him. seeing him. I think he can make the playoffs next year on Atlanta. Really? I think the AFC South is absolute garbage. The NFC South. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think the NFC South is absolute garbage. So is AFC South, too. <laughs> yeah, they both are. But yeah, What's I think, up with the South, bro? I don't know, but I think the NFC South is trash and that it really is. Like, you saw a team with a losing record make the playoffs this year, and it could be anybody's division. I didn't even think of I that. don't know if they're – And it's warm. And they won eight games. And it's warm. I think. They might have won seven. I might have made that up. They won seven. But, yeah, so – and then, you know, as – you know, he's from Alabama, so it's not like a super far transition to Atlanta. Or not from Alabama, but he, Dude, he's yeah. in Alabama – but uh, it, 
I could see I could see a team like Atlanta being successful. Um, I know that Calvin Ridley's on the Jaguars now, so I guess he doesn't have him. But yeah, I mean, and then uh, dude from Florida, that ten, that tight ends there. Oh yeah, Kyle Pitts. So yeah, I lo- I like that Atlanta. I think that he would he would definitely win that division there, especially now Tom Brady's gone. So I mean, dude, that division is rough. Which I which if Derek Carr goes to the Saints, I that that might make it a little bit harder just because yeah. I think the Saints defense really is solid. But but still, like yeah. I, that division's so bad, so bad. Yeah, for sure. I think we covered both of those, so I'm good with that. Um, if you guys follow us on TikTok, also you guys saw that Cameron had a video do pretty well about LeBron because anytime LeBron utters from this dude's lips, we get you know. <laughs> 50k plus on on that video so i i think that a lot of you guys know that i'm more on the jordan side but you i haven't really elaborated much on it you know i'm just kind of like you see the jersey by my head and stuff like that but we don't have any real clips of me defending jordan um or why i think what i think so i figured i'd go into that maybe a little bit yeah i got some on my on my mind too based on what i told you i was gonna say yeah well i know it's totally different and I'm going to talk about kind of what you were telling me earlier. I'm going to take it from you. Hey, hey, uh, you want to, you want to, before we get into that, right? Before we get into that, there's something I got to tell you. What? Because I'm a good big brother. What? And I'm going to do what you couldn't. And you have a booger. What? <laughs> In your right nostril. Let me, let me get a peek. You got it, buddy. Where is it? And now. It's when, gone? Yeah. And now when there's a clip. And so, but I one? had a clip before this. It's gonna be in my notes. I actually just noticed it, so I, I, I think it I would have no- noticed. It was poking out. It was, oh. it was probably like this far out. All right, but um, but yeah. So, to me personally, when I look at the go debate, I, <laughs> that was goofy. I made a goofy face, bro. Oh really? Yeah. Right. Like if I would have made that into, a, I was like this. <laughs> I think I, I <laughs> like the that. hair. Yeah. No, not no call outs, but yeah, no call outs. Not all that. Um, when I think about the GOAT debate, and obviously to me it comes down between Jordan and LeBron, I think you either have Jordan, LeBron, or you're wrong. Anybody else is the wrong answer. So, personally, I think Jordan's obviously a better winner, and I think LeBron is a worse loser. Like, he, it's both. Like, he's not a better winner, and he's a worse loser. So, what I mean by that is, there's a blemish on LeBron's GOAT debate, and that is the 2011 Mavericks series when you're the favorite. And there's nothing in the history of Jordan's um, experience in the NFL, or in the NFL, we were just talking about that, experience in the NBA that is anywhere close to the travesty that was the 2011 finals with LeBron James and how he completely fell apart as the favorite of the in like between the Heat and the Mavericks. And the Mavericks are probably one of the – most overachieving teams won a finals in a great finals run, but it's not like he lost. Like there's, there's better teams he could have lost. He could have, if the Lakers make it and he loses to Kobe, whatever. But he lost to Dirk Nowitzki and the Mavericks with you know a decent supporting cast and only one All Star. So and and he had a the the Heat obviously were stacked and they go they go beyond that to win back to back. Um and imagine if he wins that and he wins three straight like that's a hu- it turns out to be a huge deal that they lose that. Because if he has a, a three-peat, his argument is strengthened by tenfold, in my opinion. But the blemish that is the 2011 Mavericks Heat series and LeBron folding in that series is a blemish that goes on his resume that is not to be found on any other of the top greats. Oh. And, to me, and to me, I cannot put him as the GOAT with a black spot. That is the 2011 Mavericks series. Every, Jordan just does Every it, single it. NBA player besides Michael Jordan has that. And also, Michael Jordan retired twice. And listen, man, the, this is the way you have to look at LeBron James, okay? If you want to say the 2011 finals is the biggest black mark, fine. Then then you can say that I can't really dispute that. The way I look at his championships is LeBron's won some championships he shouldn't have won, and he's lost a championship that he that he should have won. Did I say that right? Re- just retry it. Oh. He He's won, won some, some championships. Champi- he won some championships that he should have lost, and he and he lost some, a championship that he should have won uh, with the Maverick series. He shouldn't have beat the seventy three and nine Golden State Warriors. He did. He probably shouldn't have beat the Spurs in twenty thirteen. He did. Like we overrate that Miami Heat team. Now he should have beat the Mavericks for sure because Dwayne Wade was like at the last year of his prime. Chris Bosh had a good year, but 
after that year and Dwayne Wade said, this is your team, Dwayne Wade's knees were screwed. He was in and out in the lineup all the time. So was Chris Bosh. They got old very quickly. Like, like I'll give you an example. In the last year when they played the Spurs, LeBron played absolutely fantastic, was guarded by Kawhi Leonard, who in his prime is one of the best wing defenders of all time. He averaged 28 on 57% shooting, and they got absolutely blown out of the building because they were not a super team whatsoever. They also had no depth at all. They had uh, a couple good shooters with Mike Miller and Shane Battier. They had Chris Anderson who probably averaged three points and five boards. I mean, they did not have the depth that these teams did. They they were a poorly constructed team, for sure. Because if you look at it, Dwayne Wade and LeBron, the, the only area the Heat were elite in was transition offense. They won when their defense was good because their transition offense, you couldn't stop them with Wade and LeBron with their lobs and whatever. But Dwayne Wade was not a great shooter, and he was also an ISO player. LeBron... He was a good shooter on the Heat, but he had, but it wasn't off passes. It was pull-ups. So they both needed the ball. They didn't complement each other like Kyrie and LeBron did. So I, I also don't think their duo was super successful either. I don't think it was a great, it was a great match of a team. I just think they put a, the names together, and they just expected the team to be an all-time great team. I think the only reason that they won two championships was because LeBron was in his prime, obviously his physical prime, and after the Maverick series, his his mental prime. So I think LeBron really carried the Heat. If you look at their stats, Dwayne Wade didn't have great stats. Chris Bosh, you know, accepted his role, which was good, but wasn't an all-star. They had an okay bench. I mean, people overrate that team. The fact that they won back-to-back, I think, is a testament to LeBron more than anything than their actual team, if that makes sense. But yep. the basis of what I'm saying is – No, you got it, bro. Yeah. We're chilling. The basis I would of, even end with that. Yeah. That, that people overrate that to, team. You don't have to summarize it. That was yeah. cash. Promise. Um, I think we're also, good Also, right I wanted to oh, talk sorry. about the Lakers because I thought you yeah, brought up a good point. A we'll get oh. there in a second. Um, yeah, we got a couple more things and we'll get there. Uh, let's start with our MVP. And I think that we're getting to a point in Giannis Antetokounmpo's career. Uh, Antetokounmpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Not Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo. Uh, I'm just going to yell Giannis. Okay. I think we're getting a point in Giannis's career where he's getting this LeBron heat treatment where he's just not getting the MVP because he's been good for so long at this point and he's been the best player in the world for so long at this point. And I think that if it was his first year doing these types of things, that he would be the undisputed MVP. And I think it's only a debate because Jokic is doing well right now. But to me, one, Jokic is not an all-time great, good enough to win three straight MVPs. He shouldn't have even won back-to-back. Joel Embiid should have won last year. And now Giannis, if he doesn't win MVP, it is purely because there is bias and we're tired of seeing the same Giannis over and over. He's the best player in the world. He's averaging 31.3 points per game, 12 rebounds, over five assists. It's probably considered his best season. 16-game win streak. Well, they lost last night. Better. I know. I'm saying like yeah, before, yeah. prior. Yeah, prior to last night, they were on a 16-game win streak. First in the, in the Eastern Conference, obviously they both are, but he leads the league in 30-point games. To me, Giannis is not just the best player in the world. He's the most valuable player in the world. And if we look past that again this year, it will be a, a dark spot on the MVP award. And I think that it will lose all of its value. If we're just – people have said for year after year after year, people have said that the MVP is a popularity contest. Please don't make that mistake again this year. Giannis is the MVP. Yeah, I agree 100%. Woo! That, bro, you scare me. Clip it, baby. I agree 100%. Giannis is the best player in the world. He should get the MVP. I mean, he hasn't won it in a couple of years. It would be disgusting if Nikolai Jokic won three straight MVPs. You it would up so quick. It would be disgusting. I know. I, but this is how you really feel. I don't feel. want him. I'm glad, no, I'm glad you're saying yeah. this because this is how you really feel. I don't want Because you were going to come yeah. up. But for you guys that don't know, he, I, we talk about the topics a little bit. We go back and forth. We're like, I'm going to say this. You say this. Blah, 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 blah. But we don't go too in-depth. And much. we always say what we feel. 99% Honestly, of. We always say what we feel. 99% of what you hear is we didn't know the other one was going to say that. 1% we're like, we're going to talk about this topic. I'll probably go with this. That's about it. So downstairs, he's like, oh, you're going with Giannis. All right. You know, I'll go with Jokic, I guess. Uh, but you know, whatever. And then we get up here. You saw the real cam poke through, and he goes, "It would be a trap." No, it would be disgusting. It would be I, blasphemous. I don't want to see Nikolai Jokic and Larry Bird in the same breath. Listen, the Nuggets. He's averaging a triple double. Don't care. I saw Russell Westbrook do that three times in a row. It didn't matter then. It doesn't matter now. 
It, it, just, it doesn't matter to me. The Nuggets, and one, he plays for the Denver Nuggets. That's lame. And we just <laughs> got to talk about that, too. They are no threat to win the championship. That is a problem. I don't care if he's number one in the West. This is this is a disgusting MVP year. Like we're ju- there's nobody that nobody's taking the MVP. We're just like I guess who we're gonna give it to, because we're trying so hard to not give it to Giannis, who is first in the Eastern Conference, which is a good conference this year, averaging 31 a game, had a 16 game win streak. Drew Holiday was down. Uh, your boy Chris Middleton Middleton was down. He's still carrying the load. He's been in and out of the lineup this year, still carrying the load, and we cannot have a guy who hasn't made the conference finals since the bubble, get this MVP award. It can't happen. Or the MVP award is going to lose all of its value. Like, we've got to give it to who's the best player in the world, who's number one in the East, who's doing his thing in his physical prime. we got to give it to that guy. Not a guy who's not a threat to do anything in the finals. We cannot give it to a guy like that. I'm sorry. Can't do it. All right, moving past that. Um, John Morant news broke out that he's taking a step away from the team after a video surfaced on his social media of him with a gun in a club. Obviously, this comes after a few other things that have come up about Jaw basically trying to be something he's not, but I don't really want to get into too much of that area of his life. I, I want to focus on what I do know because I don't know John Morant personally. And what I do know is he obviously is setting a bad example when he's losing um, some credibility. Most importantly, I think he might just have a bad circle of people around him. And when you're a successful guy like John Morant, you want the best circle around you possible. Even if you're not successful, there's an old adage that says, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are um, or who you're going to be. And I don't know John Morant's friends, but just looking at him, I can guess. And they don't seem like the type of guys that take you to more success. I, I heard this earlier today. Powerade hasn't had a face of Powerade as an athlete in five years. A week ago, they decide to make John Morant the face of Powerade. They come out with a commercial with his dad overlaying um, basically his story of, you know, how he was underrated, went to Murray State, blah, blah, blah. And then this comes out. So to me, you know, I, I might not get like the full culture. I know that, you know, I didn't grow up in that area. I didn't grow up in the hood. I didn't, I'm, I'm white. I didn't, I don't, I can't necessarily relate to all those things. And I don't even know if John Morant can either, but I, I, I personally, has a shot, bro. At who? I was like, that was like a like a nice, ni- a nice shot. At John. <laughs> like, I don't think he can either. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I think he's just trying to be something that he's not, yeah. and and something that might seem cool and might seem you know gangster or hood or whatever, and it's just not even it's not who he is one, and not who anybody should really strive to be. Right. He he's a young impressionable young man. He lives in Memphis which is freaking probably murder capital of the U.S. Like we said earlier, he's taken the Memphis Grizzlies identity as like a tough, hard-nosed team, which is good. But I think he kind of embodies like that thug, like I can do whatever I want, I don't care mentality. And that's just not going to get you anywhere in life. Like that's just only going to cause destruction. So the good thing is, is like he's at a crossroads right now and he can, you know, there's two roads and he could choose what path he's going down. And uh, hopefully he makes the right decision because the NBA needs John Morant, man. Like, he is a exciting young player that the NBA, you know, needs. Um, it's good for sports. All right, so obviously LeBron's been out. AD is finally doing what he should be doing since 2020, and that's being the leader of the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, he looked great, 38 points last night. They went on to beat the Warriors with Steph in his first game back. And... Hopefully this is a testament to the future and what we're going to see coming forward, especially even as LeBron comes back. Um, If AD is going to be the best player on the team now, and as long as that translates into when LeBron comes back and LeBron can kind of just feed to the team and just improve where they are instead of trying to take over and be the number one again, I think this could be really the best thing that could have happened for the Lakers as a whole. And that, that is really, really something, especially after, you know, this full switch of their roster during the trade deadline. We could really see a team that comes out and, and makes either this play-on game or potentially even better. I think eight of their next ten are home games. And even the ones that aren't are like the Raptors and um, John Morantless, Grizzlies, stuff like that. I think they have very winning, winnable games. And I I don't know if they still do, but they did have the easiest schedule remaining in the, in the NBA. So if that means that they can maybe finagle their way up to a six or five seed and then LeBron comes back, they're going to make noise. They're going to make noise in that playoffs. Um, 
I just really don't want to see them play the Suns in the first round. But and this kind of brings uh, us back to the goat argument. I mean, LeBron is the most adaptable player in the NBA, and it's proven because he's the only player in NBA history to win three NBA championships on three different teams and be the Finals MVP every single time. So he's won with a different uh, coach, different cast of teammates. And he, you can just plug him in anywhere, and he's going to find his role. So I think it's great that Anthony Davis is stepping up. LeBron's going to come in. He's going to be their point guard. He's going to give Anthony Davis the ball. The offense is going to run through him. And I think that that's the best version of the Lakers. So maybe this was the best thing that could happen for the Lakers to get Anthony, Anthony Davis going uh, offensively, and then you just stick LeBron in there as the point guard. He's going to feed him, get him even better looks. So I think this, this will be more of a version like the 2020 Lakers that we all know and love. Amen. So, uh, um, I'm good with that, honestly. Yeah, I'm sure. So, watching, watching the Knicks Celtics game last night. I don't know if you guys caught that one, but it went into overtime, double overtime. And I don't know if it's just how Tatum's playing right now. I know he played bad on his birthday. <laughs> Shout out Nick. Uh, but to me. I don't see a clear debate between Luca and Tatum. I think that Luca is far and away the superior player, head and shoulders over Tatum. I think Luca is a clear top five player in the NBA. I think there's heavy arguments that at times Tatum isn't even the best player on his team. And maybe now there's kind of that argument with Kyrie, but I think still Kyrie can have moments, but there can be a week goes by and Jalen Brown's the best player on the Celtics. And I don't think there's any debate really that Luke is the best player in the Mavericks. Obviously, they're a worse team, but I think Luke is better than both. <laughs> he could be he'd be better than Jalen Brown if he was on his team anyway. So that that I mean, I I the Knicks are playing great basketball, but you're at home. You're Jason Tatum. You're Jalen Brown, and you're telling me that you have a chance to just play 12 minutes in an OT or whatever it is, and just take your guys and say we're gonna win this game with our guys, and then you don't. And they had opportunity after they had multiple opportunities to win the game. Then you have the ball with six seconds left with a, the supposedly top five player in the NBA, MVP candidate, and you don't get a really super clear shot off. I mean, you do with Al Horford, but I want the ball on that guy. Like, it's funny to me, actually, that when it comes to other superstars, like, imagine LeBron takes the ball down the court and then he kicks it out in overtime and D'Angelo Russell takes the shot. People would be like, LeBron. Yeah. Take the shot. I mean, that's what he's done his whole career. He's always made the right basketball play. I mean, and that's another <laughs> so another thing. Let's right? not go back to LeBron though. Sorry, I shouldn't have brought that up. But Luca Tatum, what are you thinking there? And and is there one that sticks out to you? I think that Luca Luca Doncic just had a tough Doncic. Oh my gosh, bro. Just let me it's not gonna happen, so stop. But anyways, Luca Doncic had a tougher upbringing. You know, living in Europe and playing in a grown men league since he was 14. So, he's just mentally there. Like, he's way more mentally tough than Tatum. I don't even think he's that much more talented than Tatum. I just think the mental game, he's so much farther along uh, because of playing in those leagues at such a young age. And I think that Tatum might just have to keep losing and losing to figure it out. Kind of like LeBron had to lose in Cleveland and lose in Miami. And then that mental switch hit. And Luke is more like Jordan, where it seems like Jordan just came into the league like that, already having that killer instinct, already wanting the ball. And Luca has that, and Tatum has to learn it. So I think Tatum just needs uh, more growing pains than Luca did, honestly. Yeah. Basically, when it comes down to it, I think what you're trying to say is Luke, all Luca knows is playing at a fast pace against grown men, and all he knows is a killer instinct to say, "I'm gonna, I'm the best player on the court. I'm going to take over games. I'm going to win." And I think Tatum right now is a little bit too much on team basketball when it comes down to it. Your team needs you to take over this game and win. It's overtime against the Knicks at home. Take over and win. And Luca can flip that switch, or he, maybe he doesn't even have a switch. Maybe it's always on, like Jordan. Yeah. But it, maybe that switch is always on for Luca. But Tatum right now doesn't have the capability, I think, to just turn it on and say, it's time for me as the superstar of this team to take over and win this game. Well, like Jalen Brown, I mean, the Celtics are going to be the best when Tatum is the best player on the team. So Jalen Brown needs to do what Dwayne Wade did to LeBron and just be like, yo, like you're the guy. Yeah, for sure. And maybe that would help, but who knows. Yeah. Let's do this. Uh, wrapping it up with this last just for fun segment. If you could make – an all-time NBA starting five. And what I mean by that is any, it's not like the best five out of position. It's not 
like LeBron doesn't have to play small forward. It's no, just it. your all time starting five. What does it look like? My all time starting five of all time in the NBA would be <laughs> what? You just just think about what you just said. My all time starting five in the NBA. No. You said my all time starting five of all time. <laughs> oh. My my all time starting five. How do we start? We gotta have that passion, boy. We gotta have that Michael Todd passion. Uh, my all time starting five in NBA history would be uh, point guard Steph, shooting guard Jordan, small forward LeBron, power forward KD, and center Shaq. That would be that would be my all time starting five. You get the shooting. Uh, you get the yeah. the body with Shaq just gonna dominate. Shaq's only gonna have one on ones, which he's unguardable because yeah. you gotta guard, you gotta spread the floor with all the uh, four shooters you got. I just think that nobody, nobody beats that team. No one. I think that my, I respect it. I respect it. Um, but I think my team beats your team. No way. I think they beat them in probably six. No. And it looks like this. My all-time starting five would be LeBron at the one at point, Michael Jordan at two at the shooting guard. At three, I'll have Kevin Durant, four, Tim Duncan, five, Kareem. There's no shot that that team of five loses to any starting five ever. What era are we playing in? Every year is my yeah. year. What, what era are we playing in? Any era you want, buddy. Yeah, yeah that's just not going to happen. My, my team has Steph Curry, the greatest shooter ever. Has LeBron James and Michael Jordan, the two greatest players ever. Has Shaq, the most dominant player ever. And KD, who's the most freakish build I have of all time. I have three of those players. You have Tim Duncan and Kareem. You need to choose one of them. They're both going to clog up the lane, and LeBron's not going to be as effective. All right, I'll take out Kareem and put in Shaq. No, I'm not. No, but this is the same problem. My, I have one center, and everybody else can shoot. My my team is built better than yours. I also have size. All right, here's my top LeBron, five. No. Okay, fine. Here's Here, my, you let me, can't uh, change yeah, it. Yeah, I can. I can do whatever you I want. You can't change it. Yeah, I can do it. I can do whatever I want. I'm going to do this then. I'm going to do... Mm, I wonder if this would work. Every area of my team is the greatest at something that complements each other to make the greatest basketball team. Yeah. I have the greatest shooter, the greatest player. Uh, the greatest closer. I have the most dominant player ever, and I have the best build ever. There's nothing you can do that would beat that team. Boom, baby! <laughs> All right, here's what we're gonna do then. We're gonna we're gonna like lay this out for you, okay? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna say my t my starting five ever. You say your starting five ever, and then we'll leave it up to everybody else. All right. So. Do you want to draft them or do you want to just do like I'm doing I'm I got my starting five ever. Let's do this. I'm let's draft with that. Okay. Let's those are our starting fives. Okay. And then this is a separate segment. And we'll draft all time starting fives and we'll say we'll see who okay. has a better team. All right. Robert Scissor for first. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think we'll just take two different people yeah. first anyway. Yeah. All right. So uh here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna draft our all time starting fives. Leave it up to you guys. Leave it up to each other. We'll argue back and forth or whatever about whose team would beat whose in a seven-game series. Um, Cam's going to get the first overall pick. LeBron so, James. Just go ahead and restart that. And <laughs> <don't> just, <laughs> I got LeBron James, baby. All right. Just do with my number one pick. Right. Or with my first overall pick, I'm going with the GOAT LeBron. All right. At number two, I'm going to go ahead and get a number two shooting guard, Michael Jordan. With my third pick, I'm going to get KD. Or my second pick. I'm going to go... With my second pick, I'm going to get Kevin Durant. I'm going to go uh, what would be the GOAT pick and roll action, Shaquille O'Neal. With my third overall pick, I'm going to get Steph Curry. The greatest shooter God ever created. All right. Shout out to Steve. So, I got Shaq and Jordan. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with uh, – I'm going to move Jordan down to the three and draft Kobe at the two. Oh, that was my pick. I was going to get Kobe. Oh, what am I going to get? Uh, you know what? I'm about, to, I'm about to shock you, bro. All right. I'm about to shock you. With my fourth overall pick, I'm going James Harden at shooting guard. Prime James Harden Houston at shooting guard, baby. Okay. 
I don't want to get All Dwayne right. Wade. I don't want. I think James. Hart, I mean, the scoring. We already got uh, good defense. I mean, my defense is gonna be a little, a little question mark. But uh, I'm gonna take. All I'm right. gonna take James Harden. So just, I'll, I'll draft mine and then we'll. All right, with my fourth overall pick, I'm gonna go ahead and get. Is there somebody I'm forgetting? No, I, I'm just. I, I'm. Can I change my pick? It's gonna. My, with my, I'm changing my pick. With my fourth overall pick, I'm going Clay Thompson in his prime. I was. Yes, I was just thinking because about think about it. He's a he when he was in his prime, he was an elite defender, a top five shooter ever. You can just plug him on in on any team, and he's just gonna compliment them so well. Give me Clay for the defense. I'm taking out James Harden. All right, with my fourth overall pick right now, I got Kobe, Shaq, and Jordan. I'm gonna go ahead and get a distributor. Oh yeah, you probably. And I'm gonna get Magic. I'm gonna get Magic okay. at the one. Your, so shoot, your shooting is a little uh, iffy, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I might not need it. Um, yeah. And then for my fifth overall pick, mm-hmm. with my pick, I'm gonna get with my with my pick <laughs> with my fifth overall pick. I'm gonna take Akeem Olajuwon. A lot, a little bit more skilled than Kareem. Uh, better right. footwork, faster guy. So I'm gonna take Akeem. Uh, Akeem. Akeem the dream. Uh, with my last pick, I really need a power forward. I'm going to go with Giannis. I, w- I mean, Giannis probably is going to be, should be taken soon. Giannis is, is yeah, he can't shoot. But I don't know. I, yeah. You I gotta, like it. I, he, he can provide a little bit of spacing though. You might need Dirk if you want like for shooting because you got Kobe and Jordan not super good at threes. Dirk's you got so Magic slow. who can't shoot. He can score, but he can't shoot. And you got Listen, Shaq. Actually, Your shooting is dog, bro. Actually, I have the two best mid-range shooters of all time. <laughs> Shaq's the the best interior sh- uh, scorer hey, of all time. You have no space. I have four bro. guys that averaged over thirty. Uh, yeah, but you all don't right. have shooting. with my with my last pick at the power forward position. I'm gonna go and take Giannis. I'm gonna have the, I'll be the best defensive team ever. By far. You love a good defensive team. Crazy defensive team, and you're not going to beat me on the interior. Probably on either side. I still got I still got good interior guys. I got Hakeem, and I got LeBron. He's I have a freight train. I have I, Shaq, Giannis, I, Magic, Kobe, and Jordan. I also have the, the three of the greatest shooters ever in Kevin Durant, uh, Clay Thompson, and Steph. Clay Thompson's a good... You know what's funny about your team? Clay Thompson... Hold on one second. Three of those players were on a team together. In their prize. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just picked the 70... You just picked the uh, 2017 LeBron Warriors and, and added LeBron and Hakeem. Yeah, that... If you took if you took the uh, 17 <laughs> Warriors and said, okay, I'm going to give you LeBron and one of the greatest centers ever, people would be saying that's the greatest team ever, which they already do. But anyways, I got KD, who's a good defender, solid defender, long, uh, lengthy. We all, we all get that. He... Pause. He all... He's a good defender. Yeah. I got LeBron in his prime. He's one of the best defenders ever. I got Steph, who's a smart defender. He he led the league in steals all the time when he was on the That Warriors. was complimentary steals. I know, but I'm just and, and we're going to keep giving him not those. Of his we're going to keep giving him those. And then we got Clay, who's a shooting guard, elite defender in, in his prime. Hakeem, great defender, has really good footwork. Shaq ain't guarding that footwork. Shaq can't. Shaq ain't guarding that footwork, baby. Nobody can guard that. I'm taking my team in six. No shot. Over you guys. No shot. Jordan and Kobe and Jordan are gonna fight over for the ball at the end of the game. Like no. y'all are gonna so have some attention, bro. No. Jeremy Lin shot it and Kobe was mad, but he Jeremy Lin got the shot off. Um They're gonna be they're gonna be the t- Jordan's get, getting the last shot, man. It's not who's gonna last and shot for Kobe, you? LeBron? Anything, Kobe. I got anybody. Anybody can take the last shot. We're we're a team here. We love Well, then other. why are you mad about Kobe and LeBron? LeBron can take the last Kobe shot. Clay can take the last shot. Game we're gonna have game six, Clay. All right, yeah, guys. that's what's gonna happen. No, no, I'm gonna win it. I'm gonna win in six, and Clay Thompson's gonna drop fifty. That no, game. you know why my team's gonna head. win in six? Why? Because Jordan never goes to seven. <laughs> that's all for episode fifty-two. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Good point, bro. Podcast. Go follow us on Instagram at Good Point Bro on TikTok at Good Point Dot Bro, and as you guys know on YouTube at the Good Point Bro Podcast. Go check out our second channel, Good Point Bro Picks, also on YouTube with your boy Adam. Uh, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you guys in fifty-three. All right, peace. Later. I got you from that ending. Yeah.